I noticed once I cut a lot of that out, things I just started trading a lot better. So my account size, I'm currently trading a 400K account. Payout was a little over 16,000. Anyone that's watching this video, if you have a strategy and it's working for you, keep doing it. Welcome to another interview with TFT. I've got Mike here today with a payout. And what we're going to do is we're going to get into strategy, payout amount. And I know you guys were asking some stuff that I had forgot to ask before, which was kind of account size, strategy, and payout amount. So we're going through those today. And before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, the bell for notifications, and drop a comment. All right, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and give it away to you. Kind of let everybody know where you're from, and how you got into trading. Okay, so I'm um, originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, North Philly, to be exact. I now live in the um, the suburbs of Atlanta. And um, I got into trading about uh, 2012, I want to say. I Originally, I started out trading options. I was trading for a, a particular, another firm. And um, they would always mention in like the weekly wrap-ups that they would have um, about Forex and, and how much faster Forex. Forex was and options, et cetera, et cetera. So they also had a Forex division. And um, once I completed the options program and I was trading options for a while, I actually uh, switched over to their uh and, and went through their Forex training also. So now that's well, that's all I trade exclusively now is uh well Forex and futures. I don't trade options anymore. Just yeah. uh, now I'm just Forex and futures. Okay. So this is a cool transition. I haven't interviewed anybody yet that started out with options, which is I feel like a incredibly complicated thing to try to trade. Like the time <laughs> decay and this like Greek something or other. I should know this, but I don't. Um, what was the transition going from options to Forex like? And it was pretty easy because uh just as you said, I think options is probably the most complicated uh, financial um, sector to trade because of some of the things that you just mentioned. You have to know your Greeks, like your, gel your Delta, your Theta, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's so many different setups you can do. Iron condors, credit and debit spreads, et cetera, et cetera. So going to Forex, which is just simply buying and selling, is it going up or is it going down? was um, yeah. a lot simpler and um, and a lot better to me also because Forex moves a lot slower than options. Options is, uh, is is much, much, much slower and Forex moves a lot faster. So the transition from options to Forex was uh, was was much easier. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Good, cool. Now, next question would be, since you were doing options and you said it was much faster paced, so was that like a scalping strategy or were you doing day trading with the options? How did that work? No, with options, I was in positions for two, three weeks at a time. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's much, much slower than Forex is. Way, way slower. Because just depending on the strategy, depending on what it is that you're looking at, you may want to take advantage of a stock that's just moving sideways. Or um, depending on if it's moving or not, you may want to use a strategy where time is working in your favor and not against you. But um, it, it was, it was, it was options is just a lot more comp. It's definitely a lot more complicated than Forex. So sure. I, I was, I was in positions for two, three, four weeks sometimes. Okay, fair. And now what about with Forex? Are you a day trader? Or are you still a swing trader? No, I would definitely say that I'm a day trader. Um, I rarely hold a position for more than a day and a half, two okay. days, if even that. For the most part, I close, I'm closing my positions out um, by the end of the New York session. Okay, nice. And now as far as TFT goes, so how did you find TFT specifically? I know you said that you had learned or started with a different prop firm. How did TFT come to mind? Um, because I follow Blake on... Um, and in, in, um, on YouTube and um, him and I were also in a, where we were in a couple of uh, groups together as well. So we kind of always would correspond sometimes from here and there. And then just watching his videos, learned about TFT. And um, I sat back and watched for a while because they were pretty pretty new. So I just sat back and see, let me see if these guys are going to stick around or not, if they have the payout proof and, and oh, if they're going to be around, if they're serious or not. And um, after about a, a year or so of just uh, being on the sidelines and observing and uh, decided to get started. And now I'm uh, funded with TFT now. All righty. Awesome. Now, are you involved in any of the, the Discord stuff or the community with TFT or are you just solely trading our accounts? I am a part of the Discord, uh, but I almost never interact. I'm really just looking there for information, for announcements that TFT has. Yeah. And uh, 
The reason for that is just because uh, when it just comes to trading, to me, trading is 95% psychological and what's worked best for me is less is more. So it's, to me, it's just, I, I try to keep out a lot of uh, noise, as I like to say. So I just really, I'm a part of the Discord, but just I just look at the announcements to see what TFT is doing. I don't really interact or go on the other channels and look at stuff. Yeah, totally fair. I get that. I think when I started, when it comes to like being involved in a community, it's very, it's very minimal because like, I mean, it could sway your bias. You could be in a position and then people are talking about, you know, being in that same position the opposite way. You're already second guessing yourself. So I think absolutely just keeping your mind clear psychologically when you're trading. Sure. Like they're great for motivation, but as far as like trading goes, it's probably better to just kind of stay in your lane. Yeah. Those, the, the, just for those reasons that you said, I just used to find myself and they turn my bias. I was taking other people's trades and yeah. I noticed once I cut a lot of that out, as well as some other things, I just started trading a lot better. So, okay, but the okay. community is great though. It, 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 it's, it's great. I think people, they should initially join it, especially if you're a new trader, um, just to see what other traders are doing, what's working well for them, what's not working well when you're trying to find your way. But I think after you, you find your way, you have to understand and know yourself. And just for me, it's just, I, I don't really follow anybody anymore. I, I, I trust my own analysis. I, I do my own trades and, um, and I just stick with myself. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Tunnel vision. That's where I'm at too. I like everything. What I've got works. So just, Hey, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Next question would be the payout. So we want to know what, what was the payout? What were your, what was your account size? And then like, let's get right into strategy. Okay. So my account size, I'm currently trading a 400 K account. Um, my payout was a little over 16,000. Nice, and, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to get another one. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. We're going to do a round two of this for sure. <laughs> and then, and, um, as far as my strategy, um, just to talk about a little bit, I'm really more of a, um, I'll, I'll wait to let the market show me its hand. And um, so I'm looking for a breakout. I, I stick mostly to the 15 minute chart. That's my my primary chart, but I do a uh, multi time frame analysis. And, I, and I'm mostly on the daily chart. I may look at the hourly, the four hour, just to kind of get a clearer picture, bigger picture overall of, of what direction um, things may go on. But for the most part, I'm on the daily chart for direction and executing on a 15 minute chart. Okay, very cool. That sounds like my strategy too. So we're on the right track here. This is awesome. I also trade the breakout strategy. Um, it's a lot of trend lines, a lot of support and resistance. I mean, definitely knowing where to put those is going to be key here. But um, I same thing. I start on a daily, kind of get an overall idea of what the direction of the trend is going or the direction of the market is going. And when we get a breakout, we either engage or disengage. It's a pretty pretty simple strategy. Uh, I think it's pretty effective. <laughs> If it, if it works for you to keep doing it, so for any, anyone that's watching this video, if you have a strategy and it's working for you, keep doing it. Just just keep doing it. Keep doing your strategy and just keep tweaking your strategy. I've I've been a victim of um, strategy hopping and uh, <laughs> years, years later, finally, you know, found found something and, and, and just sticking with it. So if, it, if it's working for you, stick stick with that strategy. You should sit. Training should be very simple. Should be very simple. All right. We, we have very similar mentality here. So the next question would be psychology. So how do you. How do you handle losses? How do you know when to take wins? Like, what is the psychology like? When I'm when I'm taking a loss, or if I have a series of losses, um, when I take a loss, I just take a loss, right? So I, I, I the way that I, I do my risk management is um, I know that the, the common theme is to risk no more than one percent, but I think that that's way too much when you're trading for a prop firm because uh, let's say if you got a ten or twelve percent drawdown, but you're risking one percent of your account balance, that means you only got ten or twelve trades before you're out of the game. Right, you, you lose right. ten or trade ten ten or twelve trades in a row, and then that's it. So I base my risk management on what my drawdown amount is. And then I just divide that by 25 and that's how much I risk per trade. And then if I get three losing trades in a row, I automatically cut my, uh, my, my position sizes in half until I recover, um, until I get back to break even, because I want to stop. If I lose three trades in a row, I want to stop the bleeding, right? I, and I want to stop it as soon as possible. And I don't want too big of a hole to climb back out of. Just psychologically, how I, I, I deal, that's how I deal with the lo with losses, right? So um, my, my strategy is once I put a trade on, 
I just leave it. It either is going to hit my take profit, it's going to hit my stop loss, or if it comes up to, to four o'clock on uh, the New York session time, New York Eastern Standard Time, then I take the position off. Um, sometimes, depending on how much room I have, I may let it run another day or so, or I may close it out before I go to bed. But um, just dealing with losses psychologically, that's that's one way how I deal with it. And then just, um, and just you just have to accept the losses. For anyone that's watching this, you have to just accept the losses and you're going to lose. And you're probably going to lose more than you're going to win. So you have to make sure that, that my edge is my risk to reward ratio. And that's my edge in the market and uh, just letting the trades run for the most part until one of those three things I just mentioned happen and just letting the markets do what they're going to do. They're, the markets are going to do whatever they're going to do. I don't try to impose my will on the market. I just <laughs> let them do whatever the market is going to do and um, just trusting my analysis and uh, just letting the, letting the trades play out, giving them room to breathe. And um, and those things have helped me uh, tremendously. Absolutely. All right, man, this is efficient. This is incredible. This is a good one. I'm excited. <laughs> um, I would say the next question is just going to be, what pairs do you look at? So do you look at multiple pairs? Or are you kind of just like that? Stick with one. What's your your pairs like? Yeah. So when I first started trading Forex, I used to look at all 28 pairs. But as I've uh, matured as a trader, I've um, started to cut that down a lot. So currently I'm only down to two pairs. I want to say three instruments total. That's a uh, Euro USD, Pound USD. And then I also trade the S&P 500 and futures because I also trade futures as well. Oh, so yeah. and those are the yeah, those are the only three that I look at. I'm a very uh, busy person. And again, like I was saying before, understanding myself and knowing myself, less is more. So the less decisions I'm making, the less time I'm in front of the chart, the less emotions are involved. Um, that just happens to work out better, best for me. And um, I'm able to be very profitable with just looking at two or three things. And that's it. So uh, the S&P 500 for futures, I yeah. trade that. And uh, the Euro USD and Pound USD, and that's all I'll trade. Okay, very cool. When it comes to futures, I haven't interviewed anyone yet that has done futures, and that's the only thing that I trade as of currently. What is your experience with futures? Is it very similar, the strategy when it comes to Forex and futures, same kind of strategy across the board? Yes, I use the same exact strategy uh, for futures and for Forex. Um, I'm, a, I'm an ICT trader, so anyone watching this, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you got somebody knows who. Oh, yeah, you got a community ICT out there. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm an ICT trader and um, and I use the same exact strategy for for futures as I do for the Euro USD and the Pound USD, and they all are in the in the three of those they normally move in the same direction, and I also pick those pairs because they move during the New York session as well for right. the most part. So yeah, okay, and then just a few more questions to end it off. So the next one is going to be let's just go through like your normal day as a day trader. Are you waking up? Are you looking at the charts all day? Are you setting alert? It's kind of let's walk us through just a normal day of a day trader. Yeah, so for me, I wake up about five, five between five and six o'clock in the morning. Um, I do. I have. I got five kids total, two very young. So I, I kind of got to get up to get the day started before oh, I yeah. get them going. But then I also like to uh, open up the charts and just to see where things are going, how they move uh, during the Asian session and in the beginning of the London session also. And then. Um, I may look to take an entry depending on if my setup is there. If it's not there, then I, I don't, I don't, I don't take a trade. But um, so between five and six, I wake up in the morning, check the charts, and that's another thing with, that's great about not trading so many pairs, right? I'm not spending a lot of time right. on the net, on doing an analysis. I know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I normally may have some alerts set up to just to see where price has moved overnight or where it's going, and then I'll, I'll look at my charts for about five to ten minutes. I'll set my alert to like, okay, well, if price goes here, then let, send me an alert. Let me know if price does this, et cetera, et cetera. So if my setup is there, then I may enter the trade in if, if the setup is there. But uh, if not, for the most part, during the morning, I just do a quick analysis. I know what I'm looking for. And that comes from back testing. That comes from years of experience that all that time that I put into to trading um, and learning my strategy. Now, my analysis take maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, even 20 minutes. I'm probably looking at the charts for too long if it's <laughs> I'm yeah, looking okay. for 20 minutes or more. So, But yeah, just in the beginning, I just uh, wake up in the morning, take a look at the charts. 
see if the setup is there or or if it's forming. And um, if it's there, then I'll take a trade. If not, if it's not there by 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, then I'm probably just going to wait until the next day. Okay, fair enough. All righty. And then I would say the last question to sign it off is, what is your advice for funded traders that they've, you know, they're funded, they got the account, but they just can't quite get that consistency or they can't quite get that payout. They're close, but they just haven't been able to get it. I would say more than anything is to trade with discipline. That's a mantra that I, I created and came up with. And uh, that and discipline entails a lot of things. So rule number one, I would say is protect your capital. Under, know your risk management. Uh, rule number two is uh, prioritize your risk management, um, protect your capital. And rule number three is see rule number one and see rule number two. Because if there you protect go. your capital and, and, and you're not over risking, you're not over leveraging, then you can stay in the game long enough. And that's all you really need to do is just stay in the game long enough and then and until you can make some profits and, and make some of your money back and, um, and and find your consistency that way. But be consistent with your risk management, trade with discipline, and um, understand yourself and, 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 and keep your psychology in check. Absolutely. Mike, this was incredibly insightful. I really appreciate you taking the time. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, don't forget to drop a comment, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Mike, this was seriously so amazing. Oh my God, thank you. We have to do round two when you get that second payout, okay? All righty. Just let me All know. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye.